And a big thank you to everyone who took time out to chat with us about the man, the myth, the legend, Kelly Bowers. Uh, certainly gone too soon, but his memory will live on here in this gymnasium that now bears his name. And it is very strange being here without hearing that booming voice and him organizing things, but uh, certainly we'll, we'll miss Kelly and uh, play on in his honor. One more game to go at Brit 52. It's the championship final. Should be a good one. Hansworth, probably the most successful team in the history of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. Never lost a game here. Four-time champions taking on small town Raymond, Alberta, typically known as the Comets, although tonight they're wearing the Union Jacks uniforms. I was asking the announcer, Jordy Hewton, about that. We'll get a bit of an explanation on the name change, but first we're gonna meet the starting lineups with Jordy. tip things off in this championship game. Small town Alberta versus big city British Columbia. Raymond against Hansworth. Hansworth controlling the opening tip, hitting screen right, wearing the white uniforms. Matthias Van with it. Now this is Marco Stolasanovic. Interesting. Up going out of bounds is Van. The, uh, the Raymond team opened up in a man-to-man. -man. They played a lot of 3-2 uh, of zone pressure defense, so opening up in a man is a little bit different look than they showed this afternoon. This is Brady Baines, now Jeter Hagee. Hagee, the first points of the night on a quick little shot there. He's a spark plug of a player. He's got a great burst and shows a good shooter's touch. Yeah, he picked up right where he left off in the second half of that semifinal game. He got hot down the stretch in that fourth quarter. Matthias Van, well, Stoisavovic, George Horn. Stoisavovic, he's showed a great scorer's touch all weekend long. Unable to finish it there, losing the handle, but getting the putback are the Hansworth Royals. Charlie Kenna with the first points of the night for Hansworth, and then coming away with the steal, Stoisavovic. He'll look to run the floor, can't get it to drop, ball out of bounds over to Raymond. Yeah, he's definitely a better spot up shooter, uh, but that time he did a great job on the defensive end and, and took it in transition the other way. Usually we see Raymond as the team that gets out real fast in transition. Hansworth is gonna have to have their guards especially ready to get back all the time for all 32 minutes to keep up with this transition game. 
for the Union Jacks. Yeah, I like that name. I was talking, I mentioned in the opening just before we met the starting lineups, I was asking Jordy Hewton about that, and he said apparently that's a name of kind of a legendary local team that toured around out of Raymond, Alberta back in the day, and so this is kind of their tribute to them. They're typically known as the Comets, but sporting the Union Jack for this championship final. Stoisavovich's first three-point attempt is a little bit long. Hey, what kind of what kind of athletic budget do they have there in Raymond to be able to pull I out tell ya. tribute uniforms? Uh, it's it's impressive, for, especially a, a town of uh, I believe about 3,500 people, just outside of Lethbridge, Alberta. You mentioned it in the very opening of the show. Guys that have played together for a very long time. And it shows in the way they run the floor. Brady Bain's three-pointer no good. Yeah, and you know, I mean, chemistry is everything in basketball, and the ability to know what your guys are going to do and to be able to trust your guys and have that, that sort of uh, five fingers making up the fist, it, it's, it's such a huge advantage. It's the secret to success in basketball. Matthias Van with the nice drive. Opens up the two-point Hansworth lead on the run in the other direction. Drake still, he'll draw contact. Well, that, that's just a blistering fast break. Yeah. He was out of there, like shot out of a cannon. They don't give you any time to breathe. And, and you know, if you're, if you're the opponent, Hansworth in this case, you can get back most of the time, but it's those other times when you just, you're a step slow or you just, can, you just forget for an instant because this Raymond team will push it down your throat for all 32 minutes all game long. First Raymond substitution, Pace and Hill wearing number 20 checks into the game, replacing Liam Davison. Drake still at the free throw line for those Raymond Comets slash Union Jacks. Second one will drop. One point game in this championship final. Lots of pressure from Raymond. Looking to run through it. Offensive foul running through it too aggressively is Robert Lutman. Yeah, again, another example where um, the player was inside the sort of real yet mythical circle. <laughs> uh, but he did, he did have position. He was backpedaling a little bit, but still in good defensive position. So good call on the charge. Back over. To Raymond, trailing by one, down hard goes Payson Hill. That will be called on George Horn of Hansworth, his first. 16 on the shot clock, 5.28 to go. First quarter, Simon Hyatt, Scott Hawley with you once again from the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. Thank you for joining us. Open look for Payson Hill, he can't hit. Loose ball scooped up by Hansworth. Strasavovich will go on the run. Now picks it up, back up high into the hands of Lutman. George Horn controls. Hands it off for Kenna. Now Matthias Van looking to attack. Van goes off the glass, gets it to go. Van with four of his team's six points here in the early going. 4.50 to go, first quarter. Brady Baines, quick take for three. Off the mark on that one. Baines hasn't been able to find the range yet. Yeah, not a lot of perimeter game for uh, for Raymond so far. And, you know, Ro Hansworth played uh, in 2-3 the entire time. Talked about how uh, Raymond was in the zone this afternoon. Hansworth was as well. But both teams seem to have adjusted for a different opponent, which isn't always easy to do in tournament play. You don't really know the teams as well. There's not a lot of quick turnarounds. Uh, so the ability to be flexible and play a multitude of styles for both these teams is, is a fairly interesting development early here. Pace and Hill's pass intended for Jeter Heggie. Ends up going out of bounds. So back to Hansworth with the three-point lead. Stasavovich. Now Lutman looking inside for Horn. Horn turnaround shot will drop. Oh, it's just a really nice motion offense. Everybody who passed the ball specifically cut through, cut to the open spot. They had a lot of back screens off the ball, led to a wide open entry pass into the block. Just uh, that was excellent execution by Hansworth. Second time at the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament for this Raymond Comets team, but the first time came way back in 1998. And interesting, all three members of the coaching staff for this Raymond squad were involved in that tournament as well. Two of them were players in it and one was a coach. 
back here 22 years later to take part in Brit. And I think people tuning in who might not know the Raymond story at all might think, oh, maybe the small town guy's a little intimidated coming in, taking on a team from North Vancouver that has so much history at Brit. I don't think that's the case at all. This is this is a Raymond team that very much feels like they belong here. Yeah, and, and you can tell they played, they played high level uh, competition games before like this isn't uh, a team that's been playing in the in the rural circuit and hasn't yeah. played anybody uh, you can tell by not only their execution their skill level uh, their cohesiveness but just they're they're not afraid of anybody they're not intimidated in the least they know they belong here and they expect to win it's a two-way school but they play 4a basketball in alberta of course the competition very stiff find themselves down by five early Boston Harker looking to attack. Hard collision between Boston Harker and George Horn. Horn will pick up the foul. Check it. It's going to be Matthias Van picking it up. It's two quick ones on Van. Sending Harker to the free throw line. If you weren't with us for the third place final, free throws were a real struggle in that one on for both teams. Harker missing the front end here. Misses them both. Van able to grab the defensive rebound. So remains a five point game. Hansworth with the lead and the ball. Lutman looking to take it all the way. He gets the roll. Yeah, rare defensive laps there for Raymond. Nobody playing help. Nobody stepping up to stop the drive into the paint. Quick take on the other end for Harker. He can't get it to go. Jeter Hagee with the offensive board. He'll bring it back up high. As Raymond resets. This is Hill. Now Harker. Baines thought about the shot. Takes it in, now back out for Harker. Harker will look to attack, scoops it up. Can't get it to go. Comes back out with it, gonna be a desperation heave as the buzzer sounds. Drake still drains it for three. Yeah, no, those are the little things that keep you in a game and can make the difference in a close game. Just those buzzer beating uh, type of plays. Desperate, extra effort, right? Extra effort making that, that uh, kick out to an open shooter. Great play. Horn, his path shut down. Gonna get a foul call, looks like against Brady Baines. Substitutions on both sides. Ruben Baldry checking in for Raymond. Matt Scott and Hamish Gregg coming in for Hansworth. Scott wears five, Gregg wears eight. Baldry for the Comets wears three. Four point Hansworth lead with the ball. In the corner, Horn will bring it back. Gets it in the hands of Stoisavovic. That shot flat, offensive rebound, put back, won't go for George Horn. Ball out of bounds, will stay with Hansworth. And over time, Hansworth it just has that big size advantage and the second and third chance opportunities you get over the course of a game can make a difference as well. So something to keep an eye on, just whether the, the size of Hansworth on the offensive boards is a detriment to, to Raymond here. Quick shot for Stoisavovic, he had that distance Mapped out well in the semifinal, hasn't been able to find it in this one, but a good play down low, keeps the possession alive for yeah, he, Hansworth. He was uh, he was really effective against his zone in the semifinal. Like man-to-man -man defense, he has to get off his spots, move his feet a little bit. He'll have to, uh, he'll have to be able to get those, those to go down though because they really need his scoring. They really needed, uh, needed those three balls he provided in the semis when the rest of the team wasn't really getting much to drop. It looked Ball like it went up the foot. It did look like it. Play on, say the officials. But uh, unless it's an actual kickball, it can go off your foot and play right. on. Heggie's jumper from around the free throw line won't go. He draws contact. Hamish Gregg picks up his first. Send Jeter Heggie to the free throw line. Don't know for sure, but we speculated as we were watching the semifinal that with the first name Jeter and wearing number two, perhaps this young man also plays some shortstop. Who knows? Yeah, definitely had uh, parents who are baseball fans, yeah. I'm guessing, and probably instilled that in their kids, as us parents are <laughs> want to do. Just keep living that dream through your kids. 
I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> Quickly ahead, Hansworth got a foul underneath as Greg goes up. Heggy goes one for two on his trip to the free throw line. Substitutions on both sides. Roger O'Callaghan will check in for the Royals. Drake still back in for Raymond. You really haven't seen any of the, the pressure from Raymond that they put on for the entire 32 minutes in that semifinal game. It'll be interesting to see if they uh, if they bring it out, maybe at the start of the second quarter, to just sort of change the pace of this game a little bit. Greg goes 0 for 2 on his trip to the free throw line. Good news for Raymond as they still trail in this one, although they've cut the deficit to 3. This is Hill. He'll pick it up. Time getting short, going to be a last second heave, getting the rim, but nothing else is Brady Baines. Ball out of bounds back over to Hansworth. Subs on both sides. Once again for Hansworth. Tristan Gow will check in for his first shift. Boston Harker, Liam Davison back in on the Raymond side of things. 120 to go first quarter in this championship final. Here comes the pressure. They're extending that defense a little bit. Hansworth able to get it into the front court. O'Callaghan controls. This is Gao. Now Stosavovic. Working his way through. Nice take, Matt Scott. Five different Hansworth Royals have scored now. Good distribution. Almost losing the handle as Davison keeps it alive. 45 seconds to go first quarter. Hagee up into the air, finds Hill. Hill turnaround shot, nice touch. That was a tough shot by Hill. He was kind of hung out to dry there by Hagee. He kind of threw a desperation past him. I thought he might kick out to the corner three, but that tough leaner got it to go. Nice move, Stoisavovic cuts his way through, gets it to spin home. Nice creative finish by Stoisavovic. He almost walked there. Yeah, Shot lots clock. of little steps yeah. there. <laughs> Shot clock, game clock, virtually identical. That shot well long. So now it's Hansworth with six seconds. Trying to add to their lead heading into the second quarter. Stoslavovic going to put it up from distance. That one won't go, but his Hansworth Royals will take a five-point lead into the second quarter of play. Yeah, interesting. In the first, they, they extended their pressure. Raymond did just in the last minute there. It was only a man press. I, I kind of wonder if they're going to switch to maybe a little bit of zone pressure. Try to. They haven't really gotten out in transition, and that really is their game. Uh, turnovers and getting flying up the floor and getting set, getting that ball in the basket before the defense gets set. And especially with Hansworth's size advantage, it really plays into Raymond's hands to try to get that tempo up, to try to get layups instead of having to score against the set defense. Yeah, and it really seemed, you know, in watching them play in their semifinal afternoon, this afternoon, uh, this is a, a team that loves to run. They can run up and down the floor and didn't really seem to tire at all. And really one of the things that helped them pull away late in that semifinal victory this afternoon. Yeah, and really uh, the pressure wasn't a matter of just like quick pressure. It was just, it was sustained pressure. They did it all game long and the Bolas handled it for most of the game. Yep. And then they started to slowly crumble and then it was done. Then it was just turnover, turnover, layup, layup, layup. And then the, the game broke wide open. So I'm a little surprised that, uh, that Raymond isn't following that same strategy of just trying to wear down Hansworth. One of the things that Hansworth has in their favor, if that was the plan, is a pretty deep bench. A lot of players on the Hansworth roster. See how deep they're willing to go into that bench if they do start to tire. Nice job of rebounding and finishing Liam Davison. And there comes the pressure right off the top. They almost forced a turnover there. Davison's first points of the night. Cuts it to a three-point deficit. Just underway, second quarter of play in this championship final at Brute 52. Simon Hyatt, Scott Hawley, the whole Shaw Spotlight crew. 
at the Kelly Bowers Gymnasium. Good defense here, leads to another turnover on the run, goes still. This is Harker, he'll look to attack, now kicks it back up high, Brady Baines for three. And that was an awesome example of transition basketball. They pushed it, didn't get anything on the initial break, found a great wide open three point shooter in, in the, on the secondary break. That'll tie things up at 14. Foul called on the other end against Raymond. Baines picks it up. His second pair of substitutions for the Royals. Robert Lutman, George Horn back in. Good job to prevent that one from going out of bounds by Horn. Between his legs a couple times, Stoislavovic. Little give and go, good defense, and ball out of bounds. Last touch by Hansworth, back over to the Comets. Yeah, it's too bad it was a great cut, and he yeah. just he saw him a little bit late, and sometimes when you see him late, it's better to not do it at all. So now a chance for Raymond to get their first lead of the night as we get a good look at Principal Fisher here at Bedford Road Collegiate. His staff doing such a good job putting this tournament on and doing a good job hitting the long jumper. Pace and Hill gives the Comets their first lead of the night. Six and a half to go, second quarter. More good defense down low, rejecting the shot of George Horn. Once again, Comets on the run. Open look from the corner, a little bit long for Drake Still. Briefly had his hands on it, did Pace and Hill. And you can feel the, the pace of this game starting Whoa. to really go Raymond's way. They're almost another turnover. Their defense yeah. is turning into that transition offense we talked about. But Hansworth doing just enough to sort of hang in there like that to really, uh, you know, I'm going to call him Marco because his name is hard to pronounce. Eh? <laughs> uh, but, but he's doing a great job of attacking the rim. We saw a lot of his stationary jump shooting in that semifinal game. He's done a great job getting to the rim and creating opportunities for Hansworth in this game right now. Avery Porter checks into the game, his first shift for the Hansworth Royals, wearing number 15. Under six to go, first half, quick take here for Heggie for three. And Heggie showed that range in that semifinal game, and, and he kind of is that kind of player who's not looking to score, but if his team needs a basket, he'll, he'll drop it. He's, he's an excellent shooter, excellent uh, finisher in a variety of different ranges. The lead now three for Raymond out of Alberta. Turnaround by Horn trying to maintain that this position was Liam Davison. Lowered the arms just enough to be called for the foul. Yeah, Davison really did have good position. He just kind of kind of brought those arms down, like you said, and just really you just gotta be patient. You know, got, kids always want to get the block, they always want to get their hands on the ball, and sometimes just being there is enough. Forcing that difficult shot. Now you're in position for the rebound, and then you can get out the other way and transition like you want to. A 10-2 run for Raymond to begin the second quarter play. He's given them a three-point lead and more free throw shooting woes. George Horn 0 for 2 from the charity stripe. Yeah, I tell you, between the sem the last game, the third place game, and this one, they're gonna have to repaint the rims orange at the end of this. <laughs> a lot of a lot of three four free throw bricks being lobbed up there. Heggy hands off for Harker. Harker will put up the long jumper. That one no good. There for the rebound is Porter. But right, getting it right back is Raymond and high off the glass. What a shot, Drake still. Yeah, awesome finish through contact there. Lead now five for Raymond. Horn up high, Mr. Slavovich. Finds Horn, Horn pushing his way through. He goes down, yeah. Harker goes down, gonna be an offensive foul. You know, that's interesting because, you know, the official didn't call what, what she must have felt was a flop, right? There's contact, body goes down, no call, so it must be a flop. But then the, you know, the player with the ball trips over the player who flopped and gets, gets charged with the travel. So I, I don't know, I think at that point you almost have to call the, the belated block. Ball does go back to Raymond. Harker gets it stripped away. Hensworth has it. Well, William Davison almost able to get it back. Now Stoislavovich will go on the run, throws up the off-balance shot off the glass as he draws contact. 
So Slavovich will head to the free throw line. Yeah, he, he's done such a, a nice job in this first half, like I kind of mentioned a few minutes ago, of, of adjusting his game and attacking the rim. You know, gets the zone in the semifinal. He was taking some long threes. He was knocking down those three-point shots. They haven't allowed him to get that look today, and he's adjusted big time by taking it to the rim. And now chipping the rim. <laughs> I'll, I'll stop harping on free throws at <laughs> some point, but... Someone's got to hit a free throw. Well, they're just such missed opportunities. You yeah. know? It's just, it's it's a classic form shot. So for a shooter, I mean, this is just easy money. Stoslavovic able to hit the back end, but that just the third point of this second quarter for the Hansworth Royals. As they've seen the lead slip away here, Hansworth Royals going to take a timeout and talk things over. We talked about the great legacy they come into this tournament with at the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. Four championships, we were there for all of them, getting to call that, and certainly it was a team that was led by Robert Sacre, who went on to have a great college and professional career, but uh, man, oh man, those, those were some entertaining teams back in the, I don't want, to, want you to have to go back too far yeah. in access <laughs> memories, but uh, those no. are ones that will always stand out for me, those well, Hansworth teams. And the cool thing about Hansworth is they, they appreciate this tournament so much. Like they bring, you saw when they came out here, they threw t-shirts yeah. to the crowd, right? They're, they're almost like the, 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 uh, the pro wrestler, the gladiators back in the day, win the crowd, <laughs> right? Deep you know, cut, and, I like it. But, but they, they do, they, they embrace everything that Brit is beyond the court, and they have fun with it. They're, they're a team with, with personality, you know, and their, their coaches uh, understand what Brit is, and so they instill that in their players. And so when they come out here, they come out here ready to embrace it and their team has personality and in turn the crowd embraces them so yeah they really they really get Brit and it's it's just awesome every time they're here to have them here not only for their their play on the court but just just the way they conduct themselves off of it now it's Hansworth showing some pressure leads to the open take for Jeter Jeter Heggie that shot well long still a four-point advantage for the Raymond Comets slash Union Jacks now down to two good running take Matthias Van gets it to drop. Yeah, you know, Hansworth in that last timeout clearly talked about how they're going to handle the full court pressure. And really, the the, uh, the Comets really have just been putting man pressure on no zone. But they've they've slowed things down. They've spaced the floor out. And that time you saw a textbook press break against man leading to a wide open layup. So uh, that that's forced Raymond now to call a timeout. And they're going to adjust their defense a little bit in a little cat and mouse game here. A little chess match heading into the uh, the last four minutes of the half. Yeah, absolutely. Two timeouts in fairly rapid succession. A lot on the line in this one. A two-point game, an entertaining game here by and by. Four minutes, 12 seconds to go. Second quarter play in this 52nd Brit Championship Final. Raymond makes their way back out onto the floor, having discussed how they're going to deal and you know, you know if, uh, if, I'm, uh, if I'm Raymond, maybe in that timeout, maybe I switch from a man pressure to a zone pressure now that they've adjusted to what we're doing man-wise. We'll have to see what they do here. But Hansworth now coming out in that 1-2-2 in that, uh, two, two zone press. Getting it into the front court. Are the Union Jacks? Drake still will pick up the dribble. Gets rid of it into the hands of Davison. Under four to go here, first half from the corner. Tough look, great take. Payson Hill for three. Yeah, beautiful corner three. Lots of arc on that one. Lead back up to five for the Comets. Stislavovic cutting his way through. Good defense, getting a hand on it, Boston Harker. Ball will stay with Raymond. Yeah, and Raymond actually did the opposite. They pulled their pressure right off and played complete half court, sort of quarter court defense. Not what I expected them to do there. Lob pass in for Horn. His turnaround shot won't go. Brady Baines back into the game, replacing Davison. Quick take here coming in off the bench for Baines. Won't go. Just rims out. 3.15 remaining first half in the championship finals. Slavovic looking to drive all the way. Can't get it to go. Now fast break opportunity and 
fouled on the fast break is Boston Harker. He'll shoot a pair. Yeah, Harker's one of those guys. I mean, they're all those guys. Yeah. They just get out so fast and in such a hurry. They continuously push the ball and, and over the game. If you don't get back every single time, it's coming right at you. Charlie Kenna, George Horn were both back attempting to defend that drive. It's Kenna who ends up getting called for the foul. Boston Harker hits the front end. That gives him his first point of the night. You know what, it's interesting. Every team wants to talk about they want to run. Everybody wants to says that they want to run. But to run, it's hard. You have to yeah. be in really good shape. You know, if you, have, if you really want to run, that, like, that's a full out sprint. Yep. Over and over and over. And it, it's hard and it takes discipline. It takes conditioning. So uh, this is really impressive what the, the style Raymond's able to play for an entire game. With that one for two trip, the lead up to six. Horn gets free underneath and gets tangled up. Shot will be waved off, foul against Raymond. Now Brady Baines picking it up. That's three on him all of a sudden. He's going to head back out of the game. Quick rest then for Liam Davison as he replaces Baines. Imagine we won't see Baines again until the second half. That's a, that's a big blow. He's yeah. uh, he's such a big part of what they do. He's an inside presence. He's physical, but he can also hit that three from the top of the key. Nice touch. Stoislavovic hits his first three of the night. If Hansworth can get him to heat up, that might help their efforts. And then a travel on the other end. Drake still called for it. So perhaps momentum swinging back to Hansworth. They've cut the deficit to three. Two and a half to go, second half of action. This is Stoislavovic. Looks like he wants to try and drive. Davison there to attempt to defend. He'll commit the foul, standing, sending Stoislavovic to the free throw line. Yeah, Stoislavovic has had a, had a really complete offensive game. We've seen him take it to the hoop multiple times, being rewarded with multiple free throws. The only thing he really hasn't been able to do offensively so far is make those free throws yep. consistently. So we'll see if he can knock a couple down here. Hamish Gregg in, Matthias Van out for Hansworth. Hitting the front end this time is Stoslavovic. Gives him seven points on the night. Been a great tournament for Stoslavovic. Second one won't go. Second chance though for Hansworth. Gregg can't get it to drop. Loose ball eventually. Hill comes away with it for Raymond. Heggie into the front court with it. Travel called yeah. against Jeter Heggie. Yeah, second travel in the last three possessions against uh, against Raymond. They're sort of feeling the effects of Hansworth's extended pressure here in the later stages of the first half. Raymond will get a little smaller. Ruben Baldry into the game. Liam Davison back to the bench for the Comets. Chance for Hansworth to tie or take the lead here as we approach the two minute mark. Hamish Gregg, well, Stoislavovic gets it knocked away. Good job coming up with that loose ball by Baldry. Harker will bring it back up high. Heggie now bounces it in for Harker. Long look, open take, Drake still for three. Yeah. Classic 2-3 zone buster, hit the high post, swing it to the opposite wing for the open three-point look, really nicely done. The lead is five once again for Raymond out of Southern Alberta. Under a minute and a half to go here in the second half. Battle for the loose ball following the miss. Eventually coming away with it with Boston Harker for Raymond. He tries to dribble through traffic, draws contact along the way. Yeah, Raymond often seems like they're on the verge of out of control, yeah. but I think they're pretty comfortable <laughs> playing at that pace. They're fine. Full tilt at all times. One sixteen to go, second quarter. Raymond with the ball and the five-point lead. Heggie will pick it up. This is Harker now. A couple of steps into the key. Back out for Heggie. Thinking about the shot is still. And they'll continue to work it around on the outside. Harker loses the handle on it. Now under a minute remaining. First half. Kenna. Now this is Greg. Kenna once again looking to attack. Running jumper. Nice touch. Charlie Kenna. Cuts 
the lead to three. Parker will pick up the dribble. Peggy, now Baldry. Parker kicks it back out. Drake still short on the long attempt. Time getting short, second quarter, a long pass. Attempting to save it, good effort there by Drake still. But will stay with Hansworth. Yeah, Hansworth can't quite get the last shot of the quarter here. But they also can't get the two for one. Gonna call a timeout and draw something up here. Try to get a quality look heading into the half. So 22 seconds on the game clock. It'll be 17 on the shot clock as these teams emerge from the timeout. As it currently stands, a three-point lead for Raymond. Chance perhaps for Hansworth to tie it up heading into the locker room, although as you say, Raymond, no matter what happens, will should get at least one more possession. Yeah, and if you're, uh, if you're Hansworth, you want to drop a shot that's going to get you obviously a good look. Probably one, one look if they come out against man, a different look if they come out against zone. Uh, you want to get a quality look for sure. And then what I'm telling my guys is make sure that we have a guy back and maybe we pressure the ball off of, the, uh, off of any rebound. Because even with four or five seconds left, you know that Raymond is going to be pushing that ball right back at you. And even if there's only four or five seconds left, they could still get a, a fast break layup. So you want to get that quality look on the offensive end, and then you want to make sure you get back on the defensive end. Lutman inbounds coming out of the Hansworth timeout. He gets it back from Horn. Pick up the dribble, looks towards the corner for Kenna. Now back into the hands of Lutman, down to five on the shot clock now. Still so Slavovich loses the handle. <laughs> Yeah, you know, he kind of carried the ball through yeah. that double team there, not called, and they, they got the benefit as they scored off of it. And with that gift, makes it a one-point game heading to the locker room as the three-quarter shot, three-quarter court shot won't drop for Raymond. Good back and forth. Tightly contested affair here in the first half in this championship final. 28-27 is our score. Raymond Alberta leads by one over Hansworth out of North Vancouver. We'll take a break. You're watching live coverage of Brit 52 on Shaw Spotlight. At the half, our score 28-27. Raymond out of Southern Alberta with the one point lead over Hansworth out of North Vancouver, British Columbia. Well, once again, no Saskatoon representation here on Saturday night, although it was a very good tournament for Walter Murray Collegiate coming up with a couple of big wins and just losing in the first round by two points to LeBold. Just had a chance to talk with Walter Murray's head coach, Kirk Jones, a few days ago. Here's a look. Continuing on with our coverage of the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. As the guy doing play-by-play -play for a couple of games at this tournament, of course, I'm always unbiased, never rooting for anyone, but I gotta admit it, when my alumni is playing at my former school, Walter Murray Marauders, playing, I, I got a bit of soft spot for those Marauders and happy now to be joined by the head coach, Kirk Jones. Uh, Kirk, first of all, before we get into this year's tournament, uh, let's walk a little bit down memory lane. You were sharing some of those memories. First of all, even before you played in this tournament, you came here as a youngster. Uh, go, go back to those early days, those early memories of Brit Forest. Well, I guess I was uh, a pretty good player and I was in grade 10. I lived in a place called Lucky Lake and I was going to come into Saskatoon to play basketball. And I kind of was didn't want to leave home. And my sister was going to university here, and she said, "Come into Saskatoon. We're going to go to Bedford Road." Mm -hmm. And I came to Bedford Road, and I about five minutes into the first game, I was watching. I said, "I, I want to come to Saskatoon. I want to play in this tournament." And in a way, I, basketball has been a big part of my life. But that's probably where I really made the decision, and I wanted to commit to being a basketball player. And so Brit's really special. And later on, I became I got to play and I coached here and then my nephew Andrew Spagward played here and he jumped over a bunch of people in a dunk contest. Remember it well, yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and then I coached with the Huskies and we used to recruit lots of kids sure. out of here and a guy named uh, James Kenyon was uh, a Brit all-star here and he was one of the great players in Husky history. We recruited him from Brit. 
and now my son gets to play here and of course I get to coach again here after coaching at Bedford Road for seven Brits. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's indescribable how important it is to me. Yeah, it's funny because I also do play-by-play -play for the Huskies basketball games and, you know, seeing not only Husky teams, but teams from across Canada come into the gym, you'll see those names on a roster. It's like, where have I heard this name before? Oh, right, they played at Brit, of course. So, uh, so yeah. yeah. It's a real tradition of getting yeah. great teams here. And when I was here, I went through the programs and we was in, and years ago there was an all-time team and it was just incredible to me, all number, all Canadians or guys who went to Division One yeah. or national team members that came through Brit. A couple it's NBA guys yeah, came to Brit. NBA yeah. guys, yeah. And uh, as the famous story goes, is the future NBA All-Star missed, <laughs> missed the subway and right. didn't, get, didn't make it to the Brit tournament or he would have been here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you went to Holy Cross as a, as a student, as an athlete. Of course, when you're talking about teams that have been successful from Saskatoon, uh, at, uh, at le in terms of appearances at Bright, you, you, it begins and ends with Holy Cross. This is a, uh, a school that's been uh, very good. What are your memories as, as a player being here uh, during those years? Well, we were looking at the board up there, and there was this period about 20 years where no one from Saskatoon <laughs> won it. And I was a player in that period. and. Probably uh, lots of memories I, I had. Probably had my uh, first game dunk after I came to Saskatoon uh, at Brit against my rival Mount Royal, and uh, my friend Greg Jockins was guarding me, so that was a big <laughs> deal. And uh, but we were also part of a game where there was a brawl, and the next game that team was kicked out of Brit. Wow! So it was like yeah, there's lots of like, but it was always just incredibly intense. I guess one thing I'll say as a player. Well, I was playing Huskies and we became a good team. I remember one of the first years we were a good team, the old education gym was sold out and there's a timeout, we're winning, the whole place was standing up and we came in and you're talking about the players, every one of us had played in Brit and that was what we said. Yeah. This is like Brit and you know, we were, it was a national level game. So that's what a big deal Brit is. That's fantastic. And now of course, back once again after this long association with this tournament, this time coaching again uh, with Walter Murray, with the, with the Marauders talk about your team this year uh, expectations going into this tournament and expectations for for the regular season because we we know it's it's pretty uh, tightly contested lots of lots of parity there in the Saskatoon League yeah you're exactly right the Saskatoon League like the coaches who are here we're all happy to be here and we kind of got in based on how well we were this year and the guys who had come back and a good junior team but really there's six seven teams in Saskatoon that are really strong like all of us are it's fun, but the coaches are saying we're stressful. Every night is a hard game. So last year where I think there was a little bit more of a split where there was some stronger teams and some weaker teams, it's, it's tough top to bottom. There's a lot of teams who may rightfully be saying at the end of the year we should have been a Brit. But we're, we're here and it's based on what we've done in the past and what people expected of us. And we're a, a big team. We're a lot of big kids, an athletic team, and uh, we're going to play hard and we're going to do our best. Excellent, and uh, I know I don't have to tell you this because you have so much experience with the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament, but have fun this weekend as well, and I, I know you'll be encouraging your players to uh, to enjoy the Brit experience. Yeah, that's something I've learned my, my friend Greg Jocks, who I've coached with, I've sort of coaches, we always steal things from each other. As an English teacher, I like to footnote who I steal it from, yeah, but you. he always says embrace the moment, enjoy the moment. Like Sometimes coaches, we say things like just be yourself, and you can't because it's so much fun. Yeah. So embrace the moment and be part of it, and it'll be a lot of fun. Awesome. Coach, thanks so much for chatting with us. Thank you. Perfect. Sixteen minutes to go in the 56, 52nd Bedford Road Invitational Tournament Championship game. 28-27 is our score at the half. Uh, the Raymond Comets out of Southern Alberta with the one-point lead over Hansworth out of North Vancouver, British Columbia. Entertaining first half of action. Get a look at some of the highlights. A uh, back and forth affair, really. Uh, another game of, of runs, you would say. Both teams uh, had had some impressive spurts, and uh, really the two 
two very different teams, but uh, matching up well in this championship final, Scott. Yeah, and both teams have tried a multitude of different defenses. They've tried uh, to kind of keep each other off balance a little bit. Uh, neither team has really been able to settle into what they want to do for extended periods of time, but they've had little bursts of it. So yeah, the second half, who can take control of this game will really come down to who can who can dictate the style of play that they want. And interestingly enough, we saw Hansworth extending the zone, the one 2, two zone pressure. Uh, and, and really, uh, Raymond's defense was more of a man defense when they extended it out. Uh, I expected Raymond to play a lot more one 2, two zone pressure because they were so success with, successful with it this afternoon. So we'll have to see if there's more uh, strategic moves to be made by these coaches to try to get their players over the finish line here. Saw some great shots from the first half. Highlights of a very entertaining championship final through the first 16 minutes of play. Update you on the leading scores. Unofficially, Marko Stoslavovic leading the way for Hansworth with his 9.6 for Matthias Van. Over on the Raymond side of things, nine points as well for Drake. Still, Payson Hill with seven, Jeter Heggy with six, just about ready to get things going here in the third quarter of play. Hansworth trailing by one first possession of the third quarter. Simon Hyatt, Scott Hawley, the whole Shaw spotlight crew with you. Nice touch from the corner. Stoislavovic buries one out of the gate. Yeah, and, and uh, Raymond came out in that one 2, two zone look and uh, it made him pay right off the bat. Stoislavovic, I can't say that name, <laughs> but man, <laughs> He sniped it from the corner. We know how dangerous a three-point shooter he is. He spent most of the first half really getting to the basket, only I think one three-pointer in that first half, but but uh, wasted no time in the second half doing what he does best. Davison drawing the foul on the other end, picking it up. George Horn for Hansworth, his third of the game. Just underway, third quarter play. That's important for the big man in the middle of that zone defense to have three fouls. And here's that 1-2-2 two, two zone pressure right out of the start of the second half. Good ball movement. Liam Davison able to get the points. Stoslavovic thought about the shot, instead passes off to his teammate. Nice touch, Charlie Kenna for three. Yeah, and both times down, Hansworth calmly, coolly gets it to that corner. Easiest three-pointer you can hit in the weak spot of the 1-2-2 two, two zone defense. Furious start to this third quarter. Teams trading baskets. Nice touch, Boston Harker for two. It was a one point lead for Raymond at the half, now a one point Hansworth lead. Get that feeling though that this pace favors Raymond, yeah. this up and down helter skelter pace. This is what the way they want to play. Heggy misses on the three, back comes Hansworth with that slim advantage. Horn gonna try to work his way through. He goes off the glass, gets it to go. Gives George Horn six points on the night. Peggy up top, now over to the far corner. That one well off the mark for Still. Second chance here for Raymond. Heggy's shot comes up short. So a three-point Hansworth advantage. 6-10 to go, third quarter. Lutman, he'll spot up for the jumper. That one well short. Wasn't all that contested, just a bad shot by Lutman. Yeah, and it's interesting. It looks like uh, Raymond is falling back into man defense if they're if they're not scoring, and they're if they do get a score and out of bounds situation, they're extending that one two two falling back into the zone. So you know, giving Hansworth, and sometimes when you're thinking as a player and you're trying to think about what you're running, you know, those easy little shots aren't so easy because your brain starts working instead of just being able to read and react. So you know, throwing multiple defenses at players is is often a way to slow them down just for that fact alone. Lutman commits his third foul of the game. Baldry back into the game for Raymond. Looking to attack from the far side. Harkey gets the roll. Back to a one point game. Looking to take it all the way through. Matthias Van can't get the first one to drop, just jams the rim on him. Open look on the second. Horn had his hands on it. Then Lutman comes away with it. Nice touch from the corner, Matthias Van. Yeah, and really you'd say that that was a good defensive possession for Raymond, but you know a fairly well contested three on that one for Hansworth. 
Turns the tide in their favor. Rutman knocks it out of bounds. Will remain Raymond Ball, 17 on the shot clock. They're trailing by four. Nice touch high off the glass. Brady Baines. Oh. Timmy Duncan fundamental. Baines Long a bank shot. Yeah. Baines had a great semifinal. Those his first points here in the final. So Slavovich looking to attack. Dishes at the last second. Van. Now Lutman up top, down to six on the shot clock. Horn can't get it to go. He's had a couple of close-up looks that just won't drop for him. Yeah, Baldry had, loses his footing. He's doing a great job of finding that soft spot in the middle of that zone. He's gotten about three easy looks, only made one of them, but he's got to keep at it, keep hitting that weak spot. Two more points for Lutman as Baines makes the turnover. Kind of made a desperation heave trying to get it into the front court when he probably didn't need to. Parker can't hit. Lead four for the Royals with the ball. 4.16 to go, third quarter. Hansworth looking to make up five titles in five trips to the Bedford Road Invitational Tournament. Stoslavovich, no good second chance. That'll drop for Matthias Van. And no surprise right now as momentum has swung back over to Hansworth, gonna get a timeout for the Raymond Comets. Yeah, Raymond has extended that pressure, the one 2, two like we expected them to do before, as Hansworth handled, handled it well. Uh, they made crisp passes, they've gotten the ball to the baseline corners where they need to get it. Uh, they've done a good job flashing and hitting the weak spots in the middle of that zone when they do get it in the half court, so great execution by Hansworth to counter what we thought was gonna be the strength of the Raymond defense. Hansworth outscoring Raymond 14 to nine here in the third quarter of play. Again, distributing the ball well. Five different players have scored here in the third quarter for the Hansworth Royals. It's a team with a lot of weapons. Yeah, guys when you have when you have great balance, it's it's really hard to key on one thing. And if one player is really not having a uh, a great shooting game, it doesn't matter as much. Lots of other players can pick up the slack, and it allows you to just run offense and and hit the open guy rather than trying to feed it through one guy. So it gives you so many good options. Just under four minutes remaining, third quarter. Raymond with the ball, trailing by six. Baines hands it off for Baldry. Back to Baines on the near side. Little bit of a screen there from Hill. Hill will get up into the air for the long two. He hits. It's nice elevation on that baseline jumper. Good extension, gets off the floor. Really hard to contest that shot. That'll give Payson Hill nine points on the night. This is Matt Scott trying to spin his way through. Matthias Van, nice little shovel pass at the very last second there. Matt Scott with the lay-in. Lead back up to six, contact would have given him the continuation. Harker can't hit the shot, but will head to the free throw line. Yeah, Harker turns that corner like he's, a, he's attacking the goal line, right? He puts that, almost tucks that ball in like it's a football under his arm. He puts that shoulder down. He, he's very aggressive and he can really sort of get that shot up even with contact. Third foul of the game on Charlie Kenna of the Royals. Harker hits the front end. No good on the second. Long outlet pass, that one well read by Harker. He picks it off. Heggie now looking to attack, gonna be called for the carry. Yeah, he really did. He turned that corner, got his palm right underneath the ball. It definitely gave him an advantage. He's trying to turn the corner before the help defender came over, so excellent call. One that's not often made or often isn't made not in the modern enough. game. Not yeah, nearly right. enough. Like you see players, you know, I see players at the high school level, even and below, they carry it, and when they, and it's never called, never called, and it just becomes a part of their game. And I, I wish they would call it more. It drives me nuts when they get away with it. So, kudos on the call there. Matt Scott draws the foul. He'll head to the free throw line. This is the front end. Second foul of the game on Boston Harker. 
Just the first team foul here for Raymond in the third quarter of play. Scott goes one for two, gives him five points on the night. Substitution. Matthias Van out. Tristan Gow back in for Hansworth. Under three to go in the third quarter. Harker up into the air, no good. Gets the rebound on his own miss. Gets it way up high. Baines almost loses it and does. In fact, will go as a backcourt violation. Just maybe a little bit of a lack of concentration there for Baines. Yeah, those are sloppy turnovers. And in a game like this, you just hate to see, hate to have happen to you and just unforced errors, basically. The lead six for Hansworth, 2.43 to go, third quarter. To Slavovich looking to attack. Scott up high for Horn. This is Scott, goes between his legs, looks to take it in, can't get it to go off the glass. Hill trying to tiptoe so he doesn't, isn't standing out of bounds when the ball goes off of him, but unfortunately for him, it will remain Hansworth ball. Slavovich, Baldry on him. Muscles his way through, that one won't go. Baines comes down with it, now Baldry on the run. Far side, Harker will put up the shot on the run. That one no good, Baldry there for the offensive board. Second chance for Harker, hits for two this yeah. time. And that second shot is really his game, that uh, mid-range going toward the hoop, being aggressive. The pull up three in transition, maybe not quite, but you know, really when you have an open look there, those are great looks. Threes in transition are great looks, you hate to pass it up, but. That second look was probably more in his wheelhouse. Seven of Harker's eight points have come here in the third quarter of play. This is Horn, handing off for Stoslavovich. Stoslavovich for the long three. That one no good, coming flying in to grab the offensive board was Kenna. Hansworth will reset. 1.45 now to go third quarter. Stoslavovich on the run through. Second chance. That'll drop for Tristan Gao, his first points. Yeah, he didn't get the uh, nice crossover move. Didn't get it to fall, but he created the opportunity by drawing the help defender. Baldry's three-pointer rims out. Kenna able to save the ball from going out of bounds. Lead up to six now, trying to make it nine as Stoslavovich. That one won't go way up to grab the rebound. Payson Hill. Baldry looking for the three on the other side. That one comes up short. Kenna now on the run for the Royals. Baines trying to deny that path. Able to disrupt the shot a little bit, but right there on the follow, George Horn. Yeah, we talked about it in the first half a little bit about the offensive rebounding advantage that Hansworth could have, and they've, they've kind of done that the last few trips down. They've gotten those second look opportunities. Baines three-pointer won't go. Solid contact, offensive foul against Slavovich. Yeah, wow, he really took a shot there. Yeah. And even if that was close, I, I'd reward him for standing yeah. in there. That was, <laughs> that was courageous the way he stood in and took a full force shot in the chest. Kind of a dangerous move as well because uh, you know Baines has three fouls. Right. That could have been his fourth foul, which, which would have changed the complexion of the game here, but, uh, but well done by him. The lead eight for Hansworth. They trailed by one at the half. 43 seconds to go, third quarter. Nice little bounce pass finds Harker from Hill. Hill gets it back. He's going to put up the long shot. Hill hits for three. Beautiful in-out move. Get that ball in the paint, kick it out for the three. It's a textbook way to generate good for three-pointers. Hill up to 12 points on the night. Running take, nice touch off the glass. Robert Lutman. Shot clock off. Losing the handle is Harker, so back over to the Royals, so a chance for them to pad their seven point lead heading into the fourth quarter of play. It is a very warm atmosphere here in Bedford Road Collegiate in the Kelly Bowers Gymnasium. You can understand if Harker lost the handle on it. Down to four seconds to go in the third quarter. 
Well contested, but a great jumper. Robert Lutman with the exclamation point on a great third quarter for the Hansworth Royals. Yeah, you know, before that last possession, I was about to say Lutman hadn't really done much after he knocked down that first shot. Then he comes back with a great close to the quarter, knocks down the contested step back. That was, that was well done. So as the buzzer sounds, Lutman hits that give the Hansworth Royals the 51-44 lead heading into the fourth and final quarter of play here at Bedford Road Collegiate. Britt 52, will Hansworth make it five titles in five trips to Britt? Or will the upstart Comets be able to come in and overcome this? It's actually now a nine point deficit as they did get that final basket up on the scoreboard. Nine points is a pretty big deficit to have to overcome in an eight point quarter. Yeah, and I tell you what, you know what, the, in the third quarter, Raymond came out with their one, two, two press, tried to change the complexion of the game, tried to dictate the pace and the tempo, and they failed. Hansworth handled that one, two, two really, really well, and they got a bunch of scoring opportunities out of it, knocked Raymond out of that defense. So now I think it's left them scrambling a little bit. They, they've got to climb out of this hole. They've got to regenerate pace and tempo and get out in transition, but they can't do it with that one, two, two. I think if they're, they're gonna have to extend the man pressure out like they did in the first half, because it wasn't quite as, as um, successful in generating turnovers, but it didn't lead to open looks either. So I think they need to extend the pressure out, but I don't think they want to get back in that one, two, two again. Underway in the fourth quarter of play, the lead nine for Hansworth. Raymond with the ball to begin the fourth quarter. This is Heggy. Had a bit of a quiet game. Hill will get up into the air for the long two, draws contact. He'll head to the free throw line. That yeah, was tough. Hill go, he went up and he kind of kind of did the scissor kick. Yeah. Kind of Reggie Miller-ish, you know, to draw the contact. Uh, I don't know if they called it up high or down low, but you know, it's, it was sort of one of those unfortunate uh, fouls if you're the defender. The high school level, I don't think they really look for that that intentional kick out. I'm right. not even sure if it was intentional, but uh, definitely, he, I think the offensive player created the contact there with the, the way his legs kind of flared out. No good on both free throw attempts, a sentence I haven't been able to say too often tonight. Free throws have been a struggle. Cuts the deficit to seven. Foul on Colin Baxter, who's fresh into the game for the Hansworth Royals, wearing number 10. Robert Lutman looks inside. This is Horn trying to spin his way to an opening. Turnaround shot won't go. Van there for the rebound. Had it momentarily. He crashes down to the ground. He'll get tied up. Hansworth will maintain possession on the arrow. Early going fourth quarter from Bedford Road. Simon Hyatt, Scott Hawley with you once again. Been a great night of basketball. We had a very close third place final. And we're seeing a great game here in the championship. Everyone pitching in on the mop-up duties underneath the baskets. We had a couple of bodies hit the floor there. You know, that's the best thing in the world though because you get that, that on your shoes right. and now you got super grip, right? <laughs> I always like to be the first guy in there to help with that. Uh, Lutman goes across court for Baxter. Baxter up into the air, float shot will drop. That was a sweet finish, lots of arc. Kind of jumped off the leg, twisted in midair. Really tough finish. Heggy looking for the three point answer on the other side, it won't go. Lead now up to nine for Hansworth. They can make it a double digit advantage on this possession. Baxter to his right, then his left. This is Horn. Now Van from distance, he hits for three. That was a dagger. That three-pointer by Van, an unlikely three-point shooter, extending that lead to 12. That was a really big shot and, and puts Raymond in a real big hole. Baines on the far side, snaps it across. Harker able to corral this one. He'll look to attack, goes off the glass. That one won't go as Harker is a little out of control on his way through. Somebody's got to stop the ball. Lutman, now Horn, a body on him. Second chance for Horn won't go. This time he will get the foul call and will head to the free throw line. Yeah, Horn's been pretty active in the paint all game. He's done a nice job in the offensive glass. When they're playing the zone, he found those nice sweet spots in the middle. He's not, doesn't get as many opportunities in the man-to-man -man defense, but he's doing a great job of just staying active and getting those put-back chances. 
Liam Davison picking up his third foul of the game. First team foul here in the fourth quarter of play. For Raymond. Warren hits both of his free throw attempts, so the free throws have improved here late in this game. Harker on the drive draws contact. Okay, Harker's get a just so relentless going yeah. to that rim. He just goes and goes and goes at 100 miles an hour, just throws his body in there. Fourth foul of the game on George Horn, so the next one will bring an end to his evening. No immediate move to replace him as Harker misses the front end. Now we do see some activity over on the Handsworth bench as Hamish Gregg hops up. Second one rattles home for Harker. Gregg will replace Horn coming out with those four fouls. The lead 12 for Hansworth. All kinds of pressure once again for Raymond. Baxter into the front court. This is Lutman. No Stoslavovich. No good way up to grab the rebound. Payson Hill. Harker on the run. Back into the hands of Baines. A long three. Baines hits from NBA range. Yeah, he's a sneaky good three-point shooter. He does a great job of trailing the play. So while everybody else goes up in transition, he sneaks down, to, uh, gets that, uh, that pass back at the three, top of the three-point line, and he's, uh, he's an effective shooter from there. Back to a single-digit deficit. Hensworth by nine with the ball. 5.15 to go in the championship final. So Slavovich gets the shot disrupted. Heggie on the run. Baines with the three on the run. That one no good. Ball out of bounds. Last touched by Raymond. Pretty clean look for Baines, though. I mean, there's yep. another opportunity generated off the penetration. He trails the play. Gets a nice clean look. I think that's, a, that's an excellent shot if you're Raymond. You'll take that every time. Under five to go in the championship final. Can Hansworth hang on and claim their fifth title? Lutman, oh, that looked like a foot shuffle. Yeah, that'll be a travel called against Hamish Gregg. We've seen Raymond go on some impressive runs throughout this tournament. They'll need one here. They trail by nine late. Hill to the corner. Harker's three is long. Davison has his hands on it briefly. Out of bounds will stay with Raymond. Yeah, again, they were able to get in the key. Harker probably not the guy you want taking that three-point shot, but it still is available. Hansworth has done a nice job of limiting those uh, transition opportunities for Raymond, and it's, uh, it's forced Raymond to have to execute in the half court. They're a little bit hit and miss. They, they love to get that ball to the rim, but... They might, need, uh, they might need a few uh, three-point shooters to come up. This is when, uh, when Hagee really kind of kind of could, uh, could be beneficial here. He's got really good three-point range. He might have to be aggressive on offense down the stretch. He passes on the shot there. Instead, dishes off for Baines. Baines hits for two. But you know what? He created that opportunity there, right? Little, yep. little pump fake on the three, got in the lane, created a wide open look for his teammate. So I think he's the one who's going to have to be more aggressive looking for both his offense and creating offense through his penetration. Horn back into the game, playing with those four fouls for the Royals. Also back in Matt Scott for Hansworth. They lead by seven, running take. That one won't go for Scott. Under four to go. Baines, now Hill. In for Davison. Davison trying to spin his way through, too strong off the glass. Yeah, it's a tough miss. That would have made things really interesting and a, and a really makeable shot. Stoslavovich back into the hands of Horn. Open look from the corner for Scott. Takes a couple of steps in, instead gets the lay-in. You know, you have a four-point swing there. The Davison yeah. miss, it was really a point blank, and then, and then a layup make on the other end. Uh, really, really changes the complexion of the game in the last three minutes here. Yeah, things becoming a little bit desperate here as Raymond finds themselves down nine. Hill spins his way through, jumper no good. Another good look for Raymond. Doesn't lead to points. Scott a little bit out of control on the run, that one won't drop. 
Hill able to pick up the loose ball. Now Hagee will head in the other direction. He'll slow things down a little bit, allow his teammates to join him. Get a foul called against Marko Stoslavovic. And I kind of thought that, that Hagee's been a little bit uh, a little bit quiet throughout yeah. the game. He hasn't been as aggressive. Like Nobody can really keep him in front. He's got great three-point range. I, I thought that he's been a little passive throughout this second half. Ruben Baldry getting set to check back into the game for the Raymond Comets out of Alberta. But first, we will have a timeout. And since we do, want to send out a huge thank you to everybody here at Bedford Road Collegiate. Starting with the tournament chair, Nicole Poyer, down to the entire staff, Principal Fisher, all of the volunteers, all of the hostesses. It is such a huge undertaking each and every year to put on this world-class tournament. And uh, never has that been more true than this year when they've had to do it for the first time in many, many years without Kelly Bowers. And uh, once again, a very successful tournament. Good crowds all week. Especially once again, no Saskatoon teams on Saturday night. Jim pretty good and packed and uh, another highly successful Brit. Absolutely. Reset the situation here, 61-52 our score. The lead is nine for Hansworth. 2.56 to go in the championship final. 17 seconds on the shot clock for them. Heggy to inbound. Heggie able to get it in at the last second. A little jumper for Hill. That one no good. There for the rebound is Matthias Van. Now Hansworth can start thinking a little bit about the clock. Maybe looking to take a few longer possessions here. You just want to make sure, yeah, you don't want to rush anything. You don't want to take anything contested. Keep working around for the shot you want. Good effort there by Baines as he goes tumbling into the crowd. Will remain Hansworth ball. Looks like no injuries over there in the stands. That's good to see. Hansworth seven on the shot clock, 2.36 on the game clock. This is Van. Now Stoslavovic, he's just gonna put it up as the buzzer sounds, gets the rim and offensive rebound, but then Hansworth gives it back. Baldry comes away with it. Dangerous pass there. Will stay Raymond's ball. And yeah, situational basketball, you know, they got the offensive rebound. You don't need to kick it out and make a play. You just have to maintain possession, run that 24 down again. Now back on the other end, they commit the foul. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where you just have to understand clock is your friend and not fouling is your friend. You just have to be a little less aggressive in this situation. Third foul on Matthias Van. Comets need to start thinking about scoring in a hurry. Harker looking to attack. He scoops it up. Nice take, Boston Harker. Now they're going to have to extend their pressure out. I'm sure they'll just stay in man. But they have to be right up on the ball. Hansworth looked like they were going to be able to get it in the front court. A bad pass, though, by Stoislavovic leads to the turnover. Heggie's three-pointer, no good. Great hustle by Baines to come in and scoop up the loose ball. You don't have to force anything here. You just get a great look. Uh, Harker looked like maybe he was trying to force it a little bit, got stuck down low, tried to kick it back outside, ends up turning it over. Now Horn with a brief glance up at the clock. He hands it off for Stoislavovic. He'll look to attack. That one no good. Second chance for Stoislavovic. He draws the foul. Yeah, it was you know great job of sticking with it because there was some contact on the initial shot, uh, no call, and he ends up getting his own offensive rebound and getting that second chance. So. Great job playing through the contact, even though it wasn't the finish on the contact. It was that, the ability to get that offensive rebound even after he was probably uh, fouled a little bit. Update you on the leading scores here as I quickly do some math. Leading the way for Hansworth, Matthias Van up to 14 points on the night. Marcos Stoslavovic up to 12 on the night. He'll be shooting a pair of free throws momentarily. Seven points apiece for Matt Scott and Charlie Kenna. Off the bench, eight points for Robert Luttman as the Hansworth Royals look to, in fact, wrap up their fifth ever 
Bedford Road Invitational Tournament title. Not too many teams in the history of this tournament have won five titles, let alone the fact they've won every time they've been here. It's not settled just yet. Still a minute 25 to go, but a seven point deficit for Raymond. Wow, impressive for uh, for Hansworth after a long layoff of not being at Brit, coming back looking like they're ready to win number five. Well, you know what, they, they come here to win. You know, they don't come here to lose Brit. And I say that sort of half kidding, but you know, there's a lot of teams, and especially in the Vancouver area, but a lot of teams that historically come to Brit, they only will come if they have a team that they believe is worthy of being a Brit, a Brit team. So a lot of times, you know, they'll be contacted and if they don't believe they have a team that's really uh, a team that's worthy of Brit and a team that they want to showcase, They'll, they'll maybe decline the invitation and say, hey, call us back in a year. Call us back because we got some guys coming up. So, you know, Hansworth comes here when, they're, when they are ready to win Brit, basically. Still Slavovich, chance to pretty much ice this one. He hits the front end. That gives him 13 on the night. Gave you the leading scores for Hansworth, leading the way for Raymond Payson Hill with 14. Looked like Harker just kind of lost the handle once again. And he's He'll had put some up the trouble with that oh, basketball. So <laughs> <laughs> Didn't look pretty, but it worked. Harker now up to 14 points on That's the night. That's an offensive foul. I thought, you know, I thought they could have called an offensive foul there. Lutman kind of gave him that that left-handed shove. Contact both ways, I suppose. Hansworth gets the benefit of the doubt. So 110 now to go. Deficit five. Not impossible. Another turnover. Raymond's going to press in the other direction. Down five. Minute four to go. Harker goes behind That's his back. Up. Baines from distance. 4 3. No good. Ball loose. Knocked out of bounds. Trying to save it out of bounds is Baldry. Will be Hansworth's ball. If Baldry had been able to just let that one go. I believe Raymond would have maintained possession, but that's so tough when you're straddling that baseline, knowing exactly what to do. Oh, Baldry gets in there and knocks the way, but he's called for the foul. Yeah, and, and that's the right call. Crowd doesn't like it. They're all cheering for the underdog here, but uh, he got a lot of hand and arm and everything else knocking that ball loose. So. So we'll send George Horn to the free throw line. Now maybe a little bit of confusion here on the foul situation. But yeah, I don't think that was on Harker. No, that looked like it was on Baldry. If it is on Harker, that is his fifth. Yeah. Now they've got it right. So Harker still able to play on for the final 54.2 unless he commits another foul. Hansworth's ball on the sideline. Up five. So good on the press is this team out of Raymond, Alberta. Can they force another turnover? Make it a one score game. Able to get it into the hands of Lutman. Nice little pass there for Matt Scott. Scott will get it into the front court. Tries to get it back for Lutman. Big collision and down hard goes Baines. And his head hits the floor really hard. Huge collision between Baines and Lutman. You can see Lutman eager to help Baines back up. Wow, that was impressive because Baines hit the floor really hard right in front of us. He did, he was aggressively going for that ball. They met in midair and, and I mean, it was just a regular foul. Yeah, nothing dirty there, but boy, yeah, his legs go from under him, his head did pound off the floor hard and uh, it's, it's uh, now he's got to collect himself and knock down two big free throws here. Yeah, got to get another look at this big collision here. Oof. It's tough to see there, but his head did clang off the floor. So it is free throws, but not the easiest free throw shooting position as he just got his bell rung. However, he drains the first one. No problem. That makes it a four-point game. Now the all-important second free throw. Chance to make it a one-possession game for Brady Baines. Baines drains the second. Doesn't even touch the rim on either of them. It's clutch. Free throws have been a struggle all night for all four teams we've seen. Able to hit a couple of big ones here is Baines. Now taking some time off is 
Hainsworth on the drive. Horn gets it to drop. Clutch shot by Horn attacking the rim against a really solid contest. So now the lead back up to six points for Hansworth. Great take yeah. by George Horn. And you know, th this crowd is openly rooting for, for uh, Raymond. Energy in the gym. They've got, uh, they've got the momentum, and Hansworth really cool, moving the ball around, yeah. getting exactly the look they want, and a, and a clutch shot against a contest right at the rim. That was just nicely done by Hansworth. Yeah, way to stay cool by Hansworth for sure. So now, Raymond down six with the ball. Are you looking for a quick three from them? Well, you probably are at this point. I mean, you can get the quick. If you have a, if you have a wide open layup, you take that. Uh, I, I'd almost look for maybe a penetrating pitch type thing. Uh, a three is ideal because at this point, you know, with a, with a five point game, a two or a three are fine, right? Yeah. Either, either one, you want to get the quickest look you can. Um, if you can get a really clean three, that's ideal. Uh, but certainly you don't turn, up a, turn down a layup or an easy shot from two just to force a three. I do want to point out the clock that you see on our screen is slightly out of sync with the scoreboard clock. Actually, 33 seconds to go in this game, and those five seconds could be big as we head down the stretch in this championship final. 64-59. Harker picks it up. Quick take, Baines, 4-3, little bit long. Up to grab the rebound, Van, he flings it down the court for Horn. Horn just gonna slow things down, gets it over to his teammate Stoislavovic. Quick foul given by Carter Hagee, but again, great composure from Hansworth. Yeah, Hansworth handled it, but boy, Ray Raymond got exactly the look they wanted. Right, Harker penetrated out, kicked it to the corner uh, to a wide open shooter, and, uh, and they really couldn't have asked for a better look uh, than they got. Matthias Van a little bit slow to get up. I think maybe just a cramp situation is. Looks like one of his teammates was trying to help him stretch out his leg. And now Stoslavovic with a couple of chances to put this one away. Hits the front end. That gives him 13 points on the night. And hear the noise the crowd is making. They wanted the Cinderella story. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. Timeout taken before the inbounds pass. Some confusion about whether or not they'll grant it. Now a brief discussion over there with the Hansworth head coach. Play on, they say, no timeout. Well, now you need the three. Yeah. <laughs> you need a three and a, and a steal, and you need the Reggie Miller moment. Yeah, exactly, the deficit seven. 15 seconds to go. Harker gets his way through. Great take. Harker gets it to go off the glass. Now we will get a timeout taken as it's a five-point game. 10.6 seconds to go. Yeah, still a two-possession yeah. game here with 10.6. So you're really uh, you're really at the mercy of, of Hansworth having a complete meltdown. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to go for the, the all-out steal on the inbound. And uh, if you don't get that, you've got to foul immediately. Parker with that basket made has taken over the scoring lead for the Raymond Comets. He's up to 16 points on the night. Once again, should say Comets slash Union Jacks as they are wearing those tribute uniforms here in this championship final. Expect to see as much pressure as you can possibly imagine from a high school basketball team on this inbounds play. 10.6 to go. Yeah, basically you're just trying to set up an inbounds pass just to get it in. Um, ideally you want to get it into your best free throw shooter because you know you're going to be fouled immediately uh, if, if, uh, if they don't get the steal. Will be Charlie Kenna to handle the inbounds duties for the Royals. Raymond getting their defensive assignment set. Needs to get it in, just kind of lobs it, loose ball at midcourt, and will get a foul called. Raymond looking for the backcourt violation, but we will 
get the foul. Yeah, Hansworth got lucky there. They just yeah, they just ran a it. they ran a pretty sloppy inbound play. Raymond switched all the screens and they just threw that thing up for grabs. It was uh, it was really fortunate that that ball didn't get a, was a live ball turnover leading to a layup the other way. Orange short on the first free throw attempt. Doesn't matter much at this juncture, but that foul called on Payson Hill. His first. Second one, no good either. Eight seconds to go. Hill a little bit of trouble corralling the ball Look for a quick score. Harker puts it up. Three-pointer a little bit long, hits the top of the backboard. The clock will expire, and it is a five-peat for the Hansworth Royals out of North Vancouver, British Columbia. What an outstanding effort by Hansworth. Fifth time coming to Bedford Road Collegiate. Fifth time winning the title. Pretty impressive winning percentage. <laughs> have never lost a game here at Bedford Road College. You can see all the players throwing the five fingers up into the air. They know that they're making some history. And wow, what can you say about the outstanding effort by the Raymond Comets, Comets coming in here, giving Hansworth all they can handle from a tiny town in southern Alberta, made it all the way to the championship final came up five points short in the end. Yeah, they played an excellent game. Uh, just a really well played game by both teams. An excellent matchup with two sort of contrasting styles. And uh, yeah, it was kind of everything we thought it would be heading in. 66-61 the final score. Hansworth wins the title. We'll take a break. We'll be back to wrap things up in just a few moments. You're watching live Brit 52 action on Shaw Spotlight. Hansworth Royals are the champions at Brit 52. Downing Raymond, Alberta, 66-61. The final two great games tonight here at Bedford Road Collegiate. We'll give you one last look at the leading scores in this championship game. Matthias Van ends up leading the way for Hansworth, but really an all-around team effort for Hansworth. Van ends up with 14. Stoislasovic ends up with 13 and 12 for George Horn in the victory for Hansworth. 18 points for Boston Harker, 17 of those coming in the second half. Just a great half. He did all he could to try and keep his team in this one, but in the end, it's just not quite enough for the Raymond Comets. Yeah, it was a lot of effort, a lot of excellent excellent play on both sides, but yeah, in the end, Hansworth, Hansworth had the size, the experience, and they, they kept their poise down the stretch really well, close out the victory. 14 points for Payson Hill in the loss, 11 for Brady Baines. Raymond Comets again, just a great performance here all week long. Made a real impression, but became fan favorites. Couldn't quite make history by winning as a small town, but we did see history of another kind as Hansworth came in and won their fifth title in fifth prize. And in a week where we've spent a lot of time paying tribute to Kelly Bowers and all he's done for this sport, for this tournament, for this city. He was a man who really appreciated history and I think he would have greatly enjoyed both this third place and this championship final, which were played in his honor. So now the hardware being handed out will wrap things up for our coverage. Congratulations once again to the champions of Brit 52, the Hansworth Royals out of North Vancouver, British Columbia. So on behalf of Scott Hawley, the whole Shaw Spotlight team and our volunteers, I'm Simon Hyatt. Thank you for watching and throughout the day, this one was for you, Biff. <laughs>